I just stumbled across a technique inside of Microsoft Excel where you can utilize Excel's cell function nested within the newer filter function to create dynamic data sets for your Excel reports. Let's jump in and take a look. Now, before we jump in and start to take a look at working with the Excel cell function, let's do just a high level breakdown of what the function is all about. So first off, the Excel cell function allows you to return a piece of information about a given reference within your Excel workbook. For example, I can make a reference to cell A1 and get information about that cell. Now the cell function takes two arguments. The first thing it wants to know is your info type. And really the info type is what type of information do you want from your reference? Do you wanna know its value, its content? Do you wanna know the file name where this reference is made? Do you wanna know whether or not it's protected, if it's formatted, and a number of other elements that you can pull from that reference? The second thing it wants to know is the reference. Well, what reference am I gonna give you information about? Is this cell A1? Is it another cell? Well, what is it? Well, in our example, we're gonna create a formula that looks something like this right here. We're gonna use the cell function. We're then gonna use the file name info type, and we're gonna make a reference to the A1 cell. Now, when I utilize this function, file name with A1 reference, it's gonna return something that looks like this. Essentially, the full path to the file referencing cell A1. Now here, you can see it's literally the full file, but if you look really closely to the right-hand side of that file path, you'll see the workbook name, and it's in square brackets, so I can see Excel cell function hyphen 01.xlsx, then to the right of those square brackets, you'll see the active worksheets name or the reference from A1 back inside of our formula. Now, I generically called it just country, but whatever the name of the worksheet is, that's what it's gonna return. So let's jump in and utilize the cell function with the file name info type to get the file path and the worksheet name, and we're gonna see how this is gonna help you create dynamic content for your reports. So open in front of you, I've got an example file that I'm gonna to use to show off utilizing the Microsoft Excel cell function. This file is called Excel function hyphen zero one, and it's a Microsoft Excel file. I've made this file available for you to download. It's just down in the description of this video, so you hop on down there, look for the officenoob.com blog link, and you'll find the file that you can download and follow along with me and utilize the cell function. So make sure you download that file, open it up, and let's jump in and see how it works. So open in front of you, I've got the example file, Excel function hyphen zero one, and it's got two worksheets here. The first one is the orders worksheets. There we go, orders, and it just contains a simple little table. So I've got some column headings, order ID, order date, ship country, product name, and so on. And then down below, we got a number of records. Now, where I'd like you to focus for just a moment is the D column. The D column contains this ship country for each of these orders, right? Whether that's Canada, France, Mexico, USA, Germany, whatever the country is. Now, big picture here, I'm gonna hop over to the next worksheet called country. Here, I've got a simple little structure, little setup. At the top, I've got a large blue bar where I wanna put the name of the country. And then down below, I've got some headers where I'm eventually gonna put the list of orders for the specific country. But where's the country name come from? Well, the country name is going to come from the orders worksheet, but when we rename the worksheet tab from country to Spain, 
Then I want Spain to show up here, and I want these records to be Spain records. So in steps the cell function. Let's take a look at this. So the cell function, we got a quick breakdown of it earlier, but let's try it out. So I'm going to jump up into the blue bar, and I'm going to bring in equals cell, and I'll open up a parentheses. So the first thing it wants to know here is the info type. Remember the info type is, well, what do you want to know? What piece of information do you want to know about your given reference? Well, in my case, I'm going to grab file name. I'll give that a double click. So remember, file name gives you the complete path, the, the, the path to the file, the file name within square brackets, and then to the right of the square bracket, it gives you the active worksheets or the references worksheet name. Now, I'm going to do a comma, and I'm going to give it the reference. In this case, I'm going to explicitly say A1. Cell A1 is my reference of the active worksheet. Now, if I were to close my parentheses and hit my enter key right now, it would give me the full path. But remember, I don't want the full path. I just want the worksheet name. So here, I'm then going to go and nest the cell function into the text after function. If you haven't used text after, it essentially grabs text inside of a value after a specific character. So you recall the cell file name returns the full path with the worksheet name in square brackets, and then to the right of the square bracket is what? Is the worksheet name. So I'm going to say I want the text after, I'm going to go after the cell function there, comma. It wants to know what the delimiter is. What's the character I'm going to grab the text after? So here. Inside of quotes, I'll put a close square bracket, close the quote, close the parentheses, and I'm done. I'm going to hit my enter key, and there's my worksheet name, country. Pretty cool, right? Just utilizing the cell function to get the workbook, workbook path and the worksheet name. But when I just want the worksheet name, I utilize the text after to grab that value. So now if I change the name, let's say if I go country and I say Spain, I'll hit my enter key, and that cell has now updated. So cool, right? This, is, this can open up a huge can, right? We can take this in so many different ways to create dynamic content based on your Excel data. So try this out first. Utilize the cell function. Get that working, get the file name, get the, the full path if you want to see that first, and then utilizing the text after function to get just the worksheet name. Try it out. <laughs> all, right, all right, are you ready for this? We're going to take the cell function a step further, and we're going to introduce the filter function to help us out here. So big picture first. So remember, we've got the orders table that contains orders for all of the countries. On my Spain worksheet, I want to get a filtered result of the orders table, but only for Spain. And if somebody changes the worksheet name, then I want to refilter the list and get that country's orders. Let's try it out. So I'm going to hop up into cell B5. I'm currently on the Spain worksheet here. I'm going to say equals, and I'm going to bring in the cell function. But before we do that, a cell function, remember, is going to give us the worksheet name eventually. But I want to filter based off of that result. So here, I'm going to bring in filter. Now, if you haven't used filter before, the filter function inside of Excel, I'm going to put a link up above where you can find a video on the filter function. You can take a look at that one after we get done here with the cell function. So the filter function, it allows you to take a range or an array of data and filter results based off of a condition. So here, I got a filter. I'll open up my parentheses. There we go. Now, the filter function takes a couple of different arguments. The first thing it wants to know is the array or the collection of data that you want to filter. So for me, I'm going to hop over to the orders worksheet. And on the orders worksheet, I'm going to grab from cell B2 
all the way down to H2156. Essentially grab that entire table minus the headers. I don't need the headers. So that's the first thing it wants to know is where's your array? What do you want to filter? The next thing it wants to know, I'm going to do a comma, is what to include inside your filter. I don't want all the records, but I want a specific set of countries. So here, I'm going to grab the country column from D2 down to D2156. So I'm going to grab that entire column there minus the header. And I want only records where it's equal to the specific country or the worksheet's name. So now I'm going to hop back over to the Spain worksheets. Now, when I did that, it put in Spain there. I don't need that, so I'm going to delete that out of there. Let's get rid of it. So now I'm going to rebuild that function that we did earlier. So first thing, I'll bring in the text after function. First thing the text after function wants to know is what text am I looking at? So here I'll bring in the cell function. I'm going to use the file name. Cool. Comma. My reference A1 cell. I'll close the parentheses. Done with the cell function. Then I'm going to do a comma because the text after function now wants to know the delimiter. So I'm going to insert a quotes. I'm going to use this close square bracket because we want everything that's after that square bracket. I'll close the text after parentheses and I'm going to close the filter parentheses as well. All right. Here it is. This is the magic. I'm going to hit my enter key. And there's my results. All the Spain records, right, based on the orders table. Now, if I change the worksheet name, let's go from Spain to, uh, let's say, Canada. C-A-N-A-D-A. -A -A. I'll hit my enter key, and it's updated. I got my title, and I've got my new set of filtered records, all based off of the worksheet name. Utilizing the cell function in conjunction with a couple other functions to create dynamic content within your Excel reports. Try it out. Here's just a quick little tip. Still utilizing the same setup that we just built. I've got my orders, got the master worksheet, and I've got my Canada worksheet here. Now, occasionally you may want the Canada data, you want, may want the Mexico data, you may want the Spain data, you may want multiple countries. Well, if I do this, if I just copy the worksheet, I'm going to hold down my control key on my keyboard and just drag Canada to the right. This will create a copy called Canada 2. And you can see Canada 2 there because our cell function is doing its work, but I've got an error in my calculation. Well, it's because we don't have a Canada 2 country, so I'm going to change that from Canada 2 to Spain. I'll hit my Enter key, and now I've got the Spain results. If I copy that worksheet again, Control-Drag, I'll change it to uh, Germany. I'll hit my Enter key, and now I've got the Germany records. So now I've quickly created multiple worksheets, but specific to the country based on the worksheet name. So cool. Try it out. That's it. Utilizing the Microsoft Excel cell function and nesting it with a few other functions, such as text after and the filter function, we can create super dynamic data sets for our Excel reports. Make sure you try this out. If you haven't already, go down to the description of the video, download the file there, and you can practice this on your own, right? Nail it down and then start to incorporate it into your own working Excel data. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something new. If you have, don't forget, give the video a thumbs up. That lets me know that you enjoyed it and you learned something new. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get new updates about new videos that we add to this channel each week on Microsoft Excel and other Microsoft Office applications. So I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video.